All right, let's see if there are any questions. <laughs> uh, let's see. What should, let's see, Harry, what should be my first move in acquiring land? The first move would be to start marketing to, as an investor, start marketing your services to people who own land and let them know that you want to buy it. I do a two page blind offer letter with a price on it, telling them what I will pay for their property. Paula Johnson, I see you say, are there any types of land that are more desirable to seek after for public records? Yes, you don't want to go after public property like school properties, parks, railroads. You know, when you start looking through the data, it will really start to make sense to you. And Teresa, you don't have to learn how to be a graphic designer with Google. You can outsource that to someone on Upwork or Fiverr. And I highly recommend you outsource everything possible in your business to give you not only financial freedom, but to also give you some time freedom because there are a lot of steps in the business. All right. Thanks for some great questions. Oh, Teresa, do, do you buy wholesale land from other investors? No, I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. I also saw a question in the group. Joe Pringer said, where do you find your properties and where do you find your buyers? And Joe, I find properties through public information at the county. I do use a data aggregator to help me with formatting and just keeping the data consistent from county to county, but you don't have to do that. The information is at the county offices. And then, uh, let's see, Matt Bernard said, it seems like acquiring inventory is very difficult in this stage of the market cycle. People seem very unwilling to let go of their land for 20 to 30 cents on the dollar. Do we have to change the business model for 2022 and offer more? You know, I hear this a lot, but the answer is no. Um, you probably hear about land investing everywhere and you think that we're in the peak of the market cycle and that is true for houses and land does tend to follow housing. It seems oversaturate land investing, but I can assure you that it is not. It's a probably about 1% as competitive as the housing market. If you just look at one state, okay, like say Montana, for example, there are like 50 million acres of raw land available. So even if 10,000 people were marketing in Montana, there would still be 5 million acres for each of them to market to. Now that's an extreme example, but you're hearing about land a lot because it's what you're looking at online and the algorithms are designed to show you more of what you like, more of what you're interested in. All right. So getting back to our topic, first thing I want you to do is write down in big bold letters and paste it on the wall above your computer. I will not send a neighbor letter to the seller. <laughs> Even though our purchase agreement with the seller has a clause that we can market the property prior to closing, we still don't want to give the seller any reason to get upset or try to back out of the deal or have a friend call to pretend they're interested just to see that you're selling it for three or four times what they're getting. Plus, they say, how can you be marketing it when you haven't even closed with me yet? I mean, sellers just get spooked when they see their property being advertised before the closing date. And whether you pull the list of neighbors yourself or you hire someone, just be sure you search the list for the property owner and remove them before sending because they will be on the list. <laughs> so how do you pull the records? Um, Okay, the free way is to go ahead and see if the county assessor has an interactive map where you can select the parcels and enter it into a spreadsheet. Okay, that's the free way or, you know, that takes a lot more time, right? There's time and there's money and if you want more of one, you probably have to give up some of the other. But the way I do it is I just pull a list from a third party aggregator site. I use Data Tree and they have a polygon search so you can literally draw a circle around or I guess it's not a circle but any shape around the property, the subject property to identify which neighbors you want. Um, there's a subscription required for Data Tree, so um, that's not necessarily the best way to do it as a beginner. But you could, as a beginner for the freeway, you could just go into the county tax assessor site or GIS. So then next, what do you say in your neighbor letter? <laughs> well, I get right to the point because I explain that I have property coming up for sale near them and before I make it known to the general public that this property is available, 
as a courtesy, I'm notifying all the neighboring property owners who might want the chance to purchase it first at a deep discount. I include an image of the parcel map on the letter. This will show the neighbor exactly where the subject property is in coordination to their property, right, in, in relationship. So then I make a few comments in the letter about what they could do with the land, like build a new home or have some extra recreational land, or maybe they could use the space for parking or storage. The idea is just list some of the possibilities and the reasons why, that if you were in their position, you'd want the same opportunity that's being offered to them. You know, the benefits of purchasing should be 100% legit, you know, realistic factors that you just don't want them to overlook. So something else I do is I state that I have not firmly established a listing price for the property and I'll be accepting all offers. So this tactic allows me to find out what the neighbors think it's worth. Well, little hint here, it's always a lot less than what my price is going to be. <laughs> but it really, um, you know, I, well, I also tell them not to wait because all the neighbors are getting this offer. And then at the end, like a PS, if you're looking to sell your vacant land, contact me for a no obligation offer, right? Because I'm, I'm in the business of buying property. So who knows, maybe another neighbor um, would like to, to buy or sell, so would like to sell. As far as timing goes, when do I mail the neighbor letters? I do it immediately after I finish up with my due diligence and I've gotten the preliminary report back from the title company, but before I actually list it. Now, have there been times I've listed it at the same time that the neighbor letter goes out? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I mean, sometimes it's an imperfect system. <laughs> but I may, usually my goal is that I may be finishing up the marketing pieces for the listing. And at that, this point, I would just have all the basic information I need about the property, right? Because I know the price for which the, the property can be purchased. I know what the current market value is based on comps in the immediate area, and I have information about road access, zoning, land use, restrictions, flood zones, and utilities. I have a copy of the current deed and the deed of adjoining properties if there is an easement. And I have a copy of any survey or plat map that's available, and I know whether or not there's been a perk test. These are all things I'm doing in my due diligence. So then when I mail the neighbor letter, I'm just going fishing, right? This is my first test into the market to find out what it's worth and what the neighbors think about it. And since my letter doesn't give a sales price, when a neighbor calls, it's usually out of curiosity about what I'm asking for. I mean, they might be genuinely interested or they might just want to know what their property could be worth. Now there are many opportunities with the neighbor. Maybe they'll want to sell their property, right? Or maybe this is my, my top hope. They'll just share stories about everything they know about the property and the neighborhood, giving me just insight about why people may love owning it. When they call to ask about the price, I usually start by telling them, I really haven't listed it yet or I have set, haven't set a price and I wanted to first offer it to the neighbors. I explain that most of the time a neighbor wants to purchase it, so we are accepting bids from neighbors until it's listed. And then until that time, if they save us from having to list it and market it, then they'll probably get the best deal. But once it's listed, there'll be a set asking price for all interested buyers. They'll have a week or two maybe before the listing hits the MLS. If they would prefer that I contact them once we have a price, I will agree to do that, but I get them telling me all they know about the area. Keep in mind though that their viewpoint can provide some insight, but it's usually not correct about the market value or the willingness of someone to buy it or do something with it. So just be careful what you believe. They may want to devalue it so they can get a better deal. So just it's important to know your numbers. And then if a neighbor doesn't actually make an offer, just list it on the MLS and keep their information so you can keep them posted on any changes in price. Okay. Yes, Teresa, I list on MLS. Uh, Casey, no, I'm not basing my price on the county appraisal. I, um, I am basing my price on the market value, usually about 25% of the market value. Nate, uh, locating vacant land only, it's just a, a filter in data tree. Um, you would need to talk to the county if you're going the free version and ask them how to filter the list. YMB says, why do you specifically target larger lots than just focus on a dollar amount? Actually, I do both. I look at five acres or more with a price range of $40,000 or more.
Okay, so I'm looking at both of those. And I do that because I'm trying to make a certain amount. Like I know what I'm trying to make. It's important to know your goal, right? So I know what my goal is. And in order to hit my goal, I just reverse engineered um, what I needed to make on each deal. So, and that's kind of how I figure out like what my target is. So I don't know, hope, hope that's helpful. I saw a post from Chris Lynn DeSisto. I guess Land is, I guess it's Chris DeSisto, I'm assuming, but says, I'm sending some neighbor letters today. Another issue is the neighbor may know the seller. Yeah, that's true. I mean, be prepared for that. They can give you a lot of great information about the seller. And then another question I saw, which neighbor should I mail? Like, so yeah, that's a great question too, because to figure out which neighbor to send the letters to, each property is going to be different. At, at a very minimum, I would send letters to all of the adjoining neighbors. So if their land touches the property that you're buying or you have under contract, make sure you include all of them. You know, um, there may be neighbors that are going to pass by the property every day on their daily commute, usually like along the same road or highway. And so you'd want to include them, but you don't want to send a letter to your seller. Just another plug for that. <laughs> so those who go through my training will get exclusive access to my neighbor letter templates. But the main message here is that before I do anything else, I reach out to the neighbors. Okay. I hope I answered all of the questions today. It looks like we had a lot, so thank you for joining me. I'd love to help you get your land investing business moving forward. You can do this, and I'll help you. Just reach out to me if you want help. Uh, you can post on this page, Facebook page, uh, Land Flipping 101, or send me a private message at Chris Thomas on Facebook, or just email me at chris at landflipping101.com. I want to hear about your journey into real estate investing. Tell me about your goals. Tell me what's holding you back, and maybe I can help you to move forward. Y'all have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye.